Good morning, everybody. My name is Dr. Anurag, and today I'll be presenting an article from uh, BMJ. Uh, my moderator is Dr. Karthik Rao. Uh, the article is titled uh, Sodium Glucose for Transport to Inhibitors in the Risk of Major Adverse Cardiovascular Events. It's a multi database retrospective cohort study. Uh, the article was uh, published in BMJ, issue number 8261. It was accepted on 13th August 2020 and published on September uh, 23rd of 2020. Introduction, SGLT2 inhibitors, uh, they are a new, uh, a relatively newer anti-diabetic drugs. And they work on, by inhibiting SGLT2 receptors in the kidney to produce a glucose reabsorption, which increases the urinary glucose excretion and uh, thereby lowers the plasma glucose. SGLT2 is expressed in the proximal tubule of the kidney and uh, mediates absorption of more than 90% of the filtered glucose. SGLT2 inhibitors are primarily indicated in type 2 diabetes and they are uh, contraindicated in patients who have severe renal insufficiency. Regarding the pharmacokinetics, uh, the oral admin, um, through oral administration, it has a bioavailability of 65% and a half-life of almost uh, 12 hours. SGLT2 inhibitors have uh, potential beneficial side effects like uh, weight loss potential of 2 to, two, uh, two to 3 kgs. It has a low incidence of hypoglycemia and uh, it also decreases the blood pressure by 2 to 7 mmHg in patients who are hypertensive, uh, mainly due to its effect as an osmotic diuretic associated with volume loss. Uh, they also have certain undesirable side effects like uh, UTIs in uh, uh, increased risk for genital infection, hypotension, increased LDL, uh, increased risk for euglycemic ketoacidosis, uh, renal insufficiency, and increase in serum creatinine. Uh, many RCTs have shown that SGLT2 inhibitors reduce the incidence of major adverse uh, cardiovascular events, especially among people with type 2 diabetes and uh, previous cardiovascular disease. The EMPAREG outcome, which is the study empagliflozine removal of excess of glucose outcome trial, uh, concluded that patients randomized to empagliflozine had decreased rates of uh, MACE and hospital admissions for heart failure. Similarly, the CANVAS, that is Canagliflozin Cardiovascular Assessment Study of Canagliflozin, uh, also showed similar results. The declared TME 58, that is the dapagliflozin effect on cardiovascular events, uh, thrombolysis in MI58 uh, trial, it was shown that dapagliflozin was non-inferior to placebo for MACE and superior for hospital administration due to heart failure. Uh, the cardiovascular effects of SGLT2 inhibitors compared with other second-line and third-line anti-diabetic treatment remains unknown. Although several studies examine the association between SGLT2 inhibitors and serious outcomes, they all have their own limitations such as immortal bias or a new user design and selection bias which make the interpretation of the data very difficult. So this study compares the risk of MACE and its components, that is all cause mortality and heart failure association with SGLT2 inhibitors with uh, DPP4 inhibitors among people with type 2 diabetes by applying a prevalent new user design to population-based studies from eight uh, different jurisdictions. Coming to the methodology of the study, uh, the data shows this uh, study implemented a prevalent new user uh, design in a retrospective multi-database cohort study using administrative healthcare databases from eight different Canadian provinces of Alberta, British Columbia, Manitoba, Nova Scotia, Ontario, Quebec, uh, Saskatchewan, and the United Kingdom Clinical Practice Research Data. The CPID is a primary care database that contains the records of more than 15 million people registered with more than 700 GPs in the UK. Uh, the study population in each participating site are population source of all individuals who received any diabetic drug between uh, 1st January 2006 and 30th uh, June 2018 were identified. The entry into the source population was defined by the date the anti-diabetic drug was first dispensed or prescribed for CPID during this period. Uh, the reason 2006 was selected as the beginning of the observation for this source population is because uh, 2006 to 2018 corresponds to the period during which DPP-4 inhibitors were approved. Uh, the study cohort included all the individuals from the source population who received a SGLT2 inhibitor or a DPP-4 inhibitor between the date uh, uh, the SGLT2 inhibitor was first dispensed in each site and 30th June 2018. 
So using a prevalent new user cohort design, each SGLT2 inhibitor user was matched to a DPP4 inhibitor user from their exposure set. Uh, the study cohort entry date was defined by the date the SGLT2 inhibitor was dispensed or the corresponding date the DPP4 inhibitor was dispensed in the matched exposition. The exclusion criteria for the study are individuals with age less than 18 years, uh, those people who have uh, less than 365 days of consecutive healthcare coverage uh, before the day of entry, uh, cohort entry. Uh, then those who have incident SGLT2 inhibitors who are initiated D uh, DPP4 inhibitors on the same date and users of DPP inhibitors who are dispensed SGLT2 inhibitor before the date of cohort entry. These individuals were eligible for inclusion in the SGLT2 inhibitor group if they have met all the inclusion criteria, no exclusion criteria at the time of the first prescription for a SGLT2 inhibitor. The patients were followed until the occurrence of an event or uh, censoring as a result of discontinuation of the study, uh, death, or end of healthcare coverage, or the end of the study period, whichever occurred first. A separate follow up times for each outcome were determined, and patients were eligible to enter a cohort from maximum of two times first with a DPP4 inhibitor and second with a SGLT2 inhibitor. But the vice versa was not allowed in this study because of the prevalent new user design. So for matching of each patient, uh, each new user of SGLT2 inhibitor exposure sets were defined based on the level of antibiotic treatment, the previous use of GLP-1 receptor agonist, the duration of DPP-4 inhibitor treatment for prevalent new users, and the calendar time. Uh, that is DPP-4 inhibitor prescription within 120 days of a SGLT2 inhibitor initiation. So for the level of antibiotic treatment, they have three levels. Uh, level 1 is 1 insulin prescription or more in the past 365 days. Uh, the second one is 2 or more class of anti-diabetic anti drugs. This is excluding insulin in the past 365 days. And the last one is others. This is including those without any anti-diabetic uh, treat, drug treatment in the past 365 days. So the incident SGLT2 inhibitor users were matched with incident DPP4 inhibitor users who initiated treatment in the same period. The patients who are switching from a DPP-4 inhibitor to a SGLT2 inhibitor or adding an SGLT2 inhibitor, uh, they were matched to a DPP-4 inhibitor, which is a prevalent user, to patients who had been using a DPP-4 inhibitor for the same duration in their exposure sets. Now, patients using SGLT2 inhibitors were matched in a 1 is to 1 ratio without uh, replacement to patients using DPP-4 inhibitors in their exposure set on nearest time conditional propensity score in the chronological order. In sites with greater than 10% exposure sets with no suitable match, matching was done with the replacement. And the drug exposure definition, uh, patients were classified into mutually two exclusive groups. One is current use of SGLT2 inhibitors alone or in combination with other anti-diabetic drugs. Uh, the other group is the current use of DPP-4 inhibitors alone or in combination with other non-SGLT2 inhibitor anti-diabetic drugs. So DPP-4 inhibitors were chosen as a reference uh, drug because both DPP-4 inhibitors and SGLT2 inhibitors are oral agents usually prescribed as a second or third line uh, treatment for uh, type 2 diabetes. And since both DPP-4 inhibitors and SGLT2 inhibitors are used at a similar point of time, it avoids a time lag bias, and, and uh, uh, which is a severe confounding factor. And DPP-4 inhibitors have no known association with cardiovascular outcomes of interest. Regarding the outcomes of the study, the primary outcome is defined as a major adverse cardiovascular event, uh, which is a composite of MI, ischemic stroke, or cardiovascular death. The secondary outcome is individual components of MACE, all-cause mortality, and uh, hospital admission for heart failure. For MACE, the event date was determined by the first occurrence of any uh, component of the composite endpoint. Uh, cardiovascular death uh, was used, uh, determined using an algorithm, that is, in-hospital death with a cardiovascular diagnosis or out-of-hospital death without documentation of cancer in the previous year or trauma in the preceding month. The date of death was defined um, uh, the, the event date for both cardiovascular death and all-cause mortality. Uh, regarding the statistical analysis, uh, patient characteristics were uh, used by uh, were described using descriptive statistics, which include frequencies and percentage for categorical variables. 
uh, means and standard derivation for continuous variables. Uh, potential imbalances and covariates were assessed uh, using the absolute value of standardized uh, difference and with the value of uh, 0.1 or more considered to, to be imported. In the primary analysis, Cox proportional hazard models were used to estimate the site-specific hazard ratios and the corresponding uh, confidence intervals for the maze. The models were registered for sex, age, diabetes, and the tenths of time conditional propensity score. Uh, 13 pre-specified secondary analysis were done. The primary analysis was repeated for individual components of maze, all-cause mortality, and hospital admission for heart failure. Uh, stratified analysis for mace and heart failure by age that is greater than 70 and less than 70 uh, sex previous insulin use and SGLT2 inhibitor molecule were also done and the uh, stratified analysis for mace by history of cardiovascular disease in the past three years was also done so meta-analysis meta site-specific adjusted hazard ratios were pooled using uh, decimonian and uh, lyra random effects meta-analytical models with inverse variance weighting. Heterogeneity between the sites were estimated using the 12 statistic. All site-specific analysis were conducted using the SAS and uh, meta-analysis were conducted uh, using review manager version 5.3. Um, in the patient and public involvement, uh, this study uh, was a secondary data analysis and done without patient involvement so there's no consent involved and patients were not invited to contribute to the writing of the or editing of the article uh, the results of the study the patient characteristics so among uh, 270902 eligible new users of sglt2 inhibitors and 632114 users of dpp inhibitors a total of 2,9867 match pairs were included in the study cohort. The study population included 1,3797 pairs of incident new users and 1,6070 pairs of prevalent new users. The baseline covariates were well balanced between the two cohorts after matching on time conditional propensity scores. So among the 2,9867 users of SGLT2 inhibitors, 42.3 uh, were initiated on canagliflozin, 30.7 on dapagliflozin, and 27% uh, on empagliflozin at cohort entry. This is a graphical representation of a uh, selection of the cohort study. So uh, the patients were all uh, included in the source population based on the uh, drugs prescribed to them uh, from 2006 to June 30th of 2018. And amongst those prescribers, they have seen for those who are new users of SGLT2 inhibitors and users of TPP4 inhibitors. Uh, using the exclusion criteria, those eligible for new users of SGLT2 inhibitors and uh, those eligible for users of DPP4 inhibitors were made into two groups. And from them, patients were included in the matched cohorts. Uh, this is a table depicting the baseline characteristics of users with SGLT2 inhibitors and matched users of DPP4 inhibitors. Uh, we can see that after matching uh, the Baseline characteristics in the two cohort groups are fairly equal. Um, it's observed that the uh, majority of the age group individuals fall between 65 to 75 years of age. Majority of the study population, that is more than 59%, uh, were having diabetes duration of greater than 10 years. And other comorbidities of, of the highest frequency include uh, those with uh, hypertension, those with dyslipidemia, and coronary artery disease. Among the choice of anti-diabetic drugs which were used apart from the SGLT2 inhibitors and DPP4 inhibitors, metformin was with the highest frequency followed by sulfonylureas and insulin. So the main cardiovascular outcomes of the study, it was found that the mean duration of follow-up in the MASH cohort for primary outcome of MACE was uh, 0.9 years, uh, generating a total of 3,70,515% years of observational time. So during the follow-up, uh, major adverse cardiovascular events occurred in uh, 2,146 users of SGLT2 inhibitors and uh, 3,001 users of DPP4 inhibitors. So compared with the DPP4 inhibitors, the uh, SGLT2 inhibitors were associated with decreased risk of MACE, a decreased risk of myocardial infarction, decreased risk of cardiovascular death, and they have a modest effect for ischemic stroke with decreased risk of all-cause mortality and decreased 
hospital administration for heart failure. This is a graphical representation of the cumulative incidence of the major adverse cardiovascular events among users with SGLT2 inhibitors after matched with uh, uh, the DPP4 inhibitors in two of the largest study sites. So it's found that uh, there is a lesser incidence of MACE in those with the SGLT2 inhibitors in both the uh, different study sites. So this is a graphical representation of uh, those uh, requiring hospital uh, admission for heart failure among users with SGLT2 inhibitors and those matched with DPP4 inhibitors uh, in two of the largest study site areas. And as we can see, there's a clear cut uh, lower incidence of hospital administration for those patients with SGLT2 inhibitors. The stratified and sensitivity analysis. The stratified and sensitivity analysis showed that there's no evidence of effect modification by age, sex, previous insulin use, or SGLT inhibitor molecule. There was no difference found in the estimated associations for MACE when analysis was stratified by a history of cardiovascular disease or for heart failure when the analysis was stratified by a history of heart failure. Discussion. So this study is a multi-database large retrospective cohort study that found users of SGLT2 inhibitors were associated with a decreased risk of MES as compared to the users of DPP4 inhibitors among the individuals with type 2 diabetes. The beneficial effects were observed for the individual endpoints of MES. Uh, strong association with MES was mainly driven by cardiovascular deaths and the decreased risk of all-cause mortality and heart failure in individuals using SGLT2 uh, inhibitors compared with those of DPP4 inhibitors. Similar results were observed for canagliflozine, dapagliflozine, and empagliflozine and across patient subgroups uh, which are defined by age, sex, past insulin use and history of cardiovascular disease or uh, history of heart failure. So this study has many strengths as well as limitations. So some of the core strengths of the study is that it is using an active comparator at a similar stage of uh, diabetes myelitis treatment. That is both the SGLT2 inhibitors and DPP4 inhibitors are used either as a second line or a third line uh, drug in the management of diabetes. Uh, there has a rigorous matching uh, amongst those using SGLT2 inhibitors and DPP4 inhibitors. There's a large sample size which uh, allows for precise estimation of the primary and secondary outcomes. Uh, other thing is the consistency of the results over several sensitivity analyses supports the robustness of the results and the data. The subgroup analysis based on duration of follow-up showed similar results for first year of follow-up along with subsequent follow-up. Uh, coming to the limitations of the study, it's an uh, observational study, so there is always a, a unmeasured confounding factors which remain possible. There's a, a risk of uh, misclassification of exposure, which is in, it remains a possibility. The outcome misclassification is also possible for cardiovascular death, which is uh, uh, defined by using their algorithm. Uh, despite the use of a common protocol, some heterogeneity was present across the different sites. And the mean duration of follow-up was only 0.9 years. And the observed findings may be due to the short-term hemodynamic effects of SGLT2 inhibitors rather than the disease-modifying uh, effect. Uh, so comparing the study with other landmark studies, uh, the EMPAREG outcome uh, trial, uh, which was uh, done, demonstrated that for the first time, a glucose-lowering agent such as SGLT2 inhibitors like uh, empagliflozin uh, could reduce the major adverse cardiovascular events in um, uh, and also the need for hospitalization for heart failure and the overall mortality when given in addition to standard of care in patients with diabetes uh, and who are at high risk for cardiovascular disorders. Uh, similarly, the CANVA study or the canagliflozin and cardiovascular and renal events in type 2 diabetes uh, showed that canagliflozin had a lower risk of cardiovascular events. Uh, but they, at the same time, they found that there is a greater risk for amputation, especially at the level of uh, toe and metatarsals. Uh, the last trial was the tapagliflozin and cardiovascular outcomes in type 2 diabetes. Uh, this showed that the patients who are at risk for atherosclerotic cardiovascular diseases, uh, treatment with tapagliflozin did not result in higher or lower rate of MACE than with placebo, but uh, did result in a lower rate of cardiovascular death or hospitalization for heart failure.
So these placebo-controlled RCTs of SGLT2 inhibitors have reported a decreased risk of MIS in participants randomized to canagliflozin or dapagliflozin. Uh, I mean, randomized to clonagliflozin or empagliflozin, and with uh, dapagliflozin reaching non-inferiority but uh, not superiority for MIS. A decrease in hospital admission, uh, admissions for heart failure was observed for the three molecules of SGLT2 inhibitors. The three main studies, which is the MPAREG outcome, CANVAS, and DECLARE TME58, were all done in a setting of patients having a pre existing cardiovascular disease or an increased risk for developing one. The use of placebo offers a greater sensitivity over using an active comparator, such as in this study. The use of rescue drugs in patients with poorly controlled uh, blood sugar also hampers the sensitivity, particularly in those with uh, cardiotoxic effects uh, of certain drugs, for example, thiazolidinidines in heart failure, sulfonylureas in cardiovascular deaths. In conclusion, the use of prevalent new user design allowed uh, to include patients with recent history of usage of DPP-4 inhibitors into the study, and subgroup analysis suggested that the association did not vary with age. And this ma large multi database cohort study, the short term use of SGLT2 inhibitors were associated with a decreased risk of MACE as compared with the use of VPP4 inhibitors among people with type 2 diabetes. Uh, the benefits were observed for all the individual endpoints of MACE, all cause mortality, and uh, heart failure. And it was also found that similar reduction in MACE were observed in, for all the three molecules and across all the uh, patient subgroups. And the SGLT2 inhibitors offers a cardioprotective benefit among patients with type 2 diabetes in a real-world setting, although additional studies were uh, needed to determine if these benefits persisted for long term.